talk about different ways to do illustration in Illustrator. We're going to do this by illustrating a single object. Um, this is my, my image that I used right here is an apple and you can see that I've illustrated it a few different ways. We've got a geometric illustration, a 2D flat illustration, a silhouette, a gradient mesh, a stroke, a gradient blur, patterns, image trace, and typography. I do have my layers somewhat organized over here on the right. That way I was able to lock and turn layers on and off so that they weren't intruding in my space as I was working. So step one, I'm going to go through these different um, techniques. Step one is to find an image. I'm actually going to use this apple. Um, this was my original apple pick and I had it locked down here. So I'm going to take this apple picture and I'm going to drag it into my new document because this is the apple that I'm going to be using. I'm also going to take, I've already done, I'm going to assume that you already know how to do a vector trace in Illustrator. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that and drag that into my new document as well because we're going to be using that. All right, so the first version to set up this document. It's important to have, actually let me take this, I'm going to cut this out, Command X will cut something out from a layer and Command V paste it into a new layer all its own. Let me move this off to the side here. Oh, let me move this off to the side there, let me do that again. Okay, so here is my apple. I'm going to lock this picture. I don't want to be able to move it or anything like that. And I'm going to create a new layer and this one's going to be for my geometric illustration. Now if I go back to my other example here, let me zoom in on my geometric illustration here. You're going to see that I tried to create my shape so that they were adhering to the different colors that you could see on the apple itself. I'm only going to do a part portion of this one because this one is probably the most time consuming piece, but so that you can see me try it out. I'm going to take my pen tool, I'm going to be using my pen tool to draw the, the shapes on here, the geometric shapes. I want a black fill but no stroke. Um, because I want to be able to have the inside. Let me go ahead and zoom in. This requires a little keyboard, keyboard shortcut action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using triangles. When I create a full shape with the pen tool, I'm going to do Command Shift A, which drops the selection. And that way I can go ahead and start a second selection. Command Shift A. If you do not drop the shape selection before you move on, what ends up happening Shift A, um, is that it will the next shape you draw will get attached to the first shape and then you'll have an issue coloring it in later. So I'm just kind of creating some random shapes here. Command Shift A. There we go. Always go back. Full shape gives you that little circle icon. Command Shift A. Uh, let me kind of come in here to this area because I want to show you how I'm going to separate um, Command Shift A, the, the different color areas that we can see here. And because it's geometric, some curved areas are going to be pulled off into a line, and that's okay. Command Shift A. Oops, I changed my tool. I hit Caps Lock by accident. Caps Lock will turn you into a target instead of Command Shift A, and so on and so forth. So this is how you're going to end up coloring in. You're going to fill the entire thing with shapes. Notice that I didn't go over the green part here. That would be a different color completely. Smaller detail pieces, you can get smaller in terms of size. Command Shift A. Um, and then, you know, some areas, if they don't actually fit a triangle, you can try other shapes as well. All right, now I'm ready to color this in. Um, again, I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut. I'm going to click on the shape. Um, the, I already have my selection tool, but selection tool eyedropper, pick a color. V brings up your selection tool, click on the shape. I don't have a fill, so I got to click on the line. Eyedropper, pick a color. V click, I pick a color. V selection, I pick a color. V selection, I pick a color. V selection, I pick a color. And you can keep doing that until you fill up the whole shape. V selection, I pick a color. Um, what I can do then is I can turn the picture off for the benefit of having separate layers here. I could turn the picture off to see what I've got going on. And as you can see, as I'm using the eyedropper and picking up little bits of these other colors, it's important that the shapes are um, different in terms of color, and that way you can get some really cool dimension when it comes to ge your geometric illustration. All right, so geometric illustration is your first one. The second one that we're going to do is going to be a 2D, and I already traced it out using the pen tool. This is not a pen tool, how to use the pen tool demo, right? It's just kind of a, it's more of a, let's see, this is going to be my 2D, right? It's going to be a, a simple color. I double clicked on the text part to change the text that was there. Um, then what I can do is I'm going to click, this is 2D, so it's going to be a flat color. So I'm just picking um, the different shapes that I created and I'm adding different colors to them. Now you could click around a little bit to get colors that you really like in terms of colors that would define that shape. 
but for the most part I'm just kind of keeping this pretty simple and I'm just using the first color that I pick and that's going to be a flat 2D illustration of that apple. Um, I'm actually going to take this guy, right, and I'm going to duplicate it. Option, click to duplicate it for the next one, which is going to be the silhouette. And while I still have it selected, Command X is going to cut it out, and I'm going to put it into Command V, its own layer. So now I've got the silhouette. Um, and let me name this, right, silhouette. All right, so this is going to be my silhouette illustration. This one's super easy. I'm going to go default black and white, but I want my black to be the fill, and I want no stroke. And there is my simple silhouette. That's a, that was a real simple one. All right, the next few that we're going to do, we're going to do the mesh, the gradient mesh, and the stroke. Um, I'm going to do the stroke one next. Um, all of my ones right here so far are a little bit too big, so I'm going to select all of those options, and I'm going to shrink them down just a little bit so I can fit them on the page better. Um, and I'm going to unlock this shape and move it out of the way for now for my demonstration. Um, actually, I made them probably a little bit too small, but let me go ahead and lock all those guys, um, except for this last one. I'm going to grab this guy again, right? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to duplicate it, right? This is going to be my, I'm going to use this one. This one's going to be my stroke. Um, I'm going to cut it out before I let go. I'm going to put it in its own, Command V, and I'm going to call this one stroke, oop, or stork, stroke. So this is going to be my stroke one. Um, let me select all those bits. Let me move it over here. Um, let me go black and white. Um, now, here's what I'm going to do for the stroke one, right? This is a technique that we really haven't played with very much. I want to give the stroke a color first. So that would be this shape right here, the, the stroke. And I'm going to pick a color. As long as my stroke comes to the forefront, then it will apply it, cut the color to that area. Let me click here. Um, I want to do the same color there. Eyedropper is always going to do the fill, so you kind of got to do a flip, a quick switch. See, I'm clicking on that little arrow to, to flip switch it. Um, this one I want to be green, so flip it. There we go. So I got green, and then this one I want to be brown. Eyedropper, pick up that brown that's right there. Flip switch it, and there we go. All right, so this is just a stroke. But I want you to experiment with different types of strokes because there's so many different options that you can experiment with here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. I'm going to make my stroke a little bit thicker so you can see it better. Um, right here, here's our first option with the stroke is you can change the, the thickness of the stroke. And you can kind of play around with the line weight, which is kind of interesting. Another option here, let me go back to uniform, is to experiment with the brush itself. And that's also going to be up there in the control bar. Now, there's a lot of different options here that you can experiment with. And it, you know, you might need to experiment with the, the stroke of the brush as you're working with it. But let me come in here. This again, this is my brushes. Let me go to this from a different spot, a different area. I'm going to go to my brushes here. It's, a, it's the same thing, right? The last ones I chose are going to be up there. But if I go to my brushes panel and I go to the library, there's all these cool artistic options that I can choose from that will give me all kinds of crazy fun strokes to apply to my image. So maybe you want your image to kind of have this hand-drawn effect which I kind of I love that, that kind of chalk pastel, oil pastel type of look. So there's my stroke. All right, next I'm going to go ahead with gradient. So again, let me duplicate this guy. Where's my layers? Okay, so I Command X, new layer, Command V. Um, this one is going to be my gradient. Okay, let me lock. Um, the stroke. I'm going to lock the silhouette to get those out of the way. Make sure I got the right one. Yep, there we are. Okay. Uh, notice that this color co corresponds to the layer that you have. That's kind of an interesting aspect there. Um, I'm going to need to move. I, I need my apple now, so I'm going to move my apple a little bit closer here, actually in between um, my shape here. Go ahead and do this again. Turn that back that. And let's work with the gradient. Okay, so I'm going to go to the window menu, and I'm going to take out my gradient panel for this one. As far as I know, this is the best way to choose a custom gradient. Um, I'm going to start with the shape of the apple itself. I may only do that for this demo, and then I'm gonna, I can go through and do the other shapes. But um, let me take this. So, so first I want to start with my red color. So I want to choose like a really good red base color, and I kind of like this darker red, maybe the lighter red there. And I'm going to bring that to the forefront. I'm going to take this box, my fill box, and I'm going to go and drop it on my gradient. You notice that it just applied it right there to my gradient. So I'm going to go and pick a different color. Now I need that darker red, right, that deeper red. And see how I'm kind of dragging it and my color is changing? That's another good way to choose different colors. But I want a deep red. Okay, that's a good deep red. I'm going to take that box and 
I'm going to drop it in there. And I don't need the black, so I'm going to take the black off. The black is unnecessary. Um, I need a lighter, almost like a pink color for my final, so I'm going to drag that in there and put that in place of the white. So now I've got my three reds here that are making up my apple color. Um, right now, this is a linear gradient. I want this to be a radial gradient, so I'm going to change it right there. And then in Illustrator, to adjust the gradient, you're actually using the gradient tool. And you can use the gradient tool to pull, to rotate, and kind of fine-tune this selection, right? So fine-tune where you want this to be and how you want this to fit within the shape. Now again, this is your illustration, so you can kind of get as, you know, you can have as much fun with this as you want. It, you know, can kind of just, as long as it looks kind of three-dimensional, I think that that's the idea that we're looking for there. This as well has the same color, so if I click on that, I can apply that gradient right there into that space. Now, there's clearly a little bit of a lighter area in there, right? This lighter area right in here. So if I wanted to, I can maybe try to adjust. If I double click on it, I can adjust the color. I can choose a different color here, and I can kind of add that. And I actually can, let's go in here with that. And I can take my gradient tool, and I can fine tune that. I actually want it to be more like this. And then I need to rotate it, because I actually want it like that. And let's smash it so I get that dark color in there. And, you know, this would probably be a lot more helpful if I actually zoomed in. Let me zoom in there. Command plus zooms you in. Um, let me stretch that guy out, but then pull the whole thing over. I, I think that grad what gradients do is you just, you are kind of do some fine tuning there, right? It's all about the fine tuning. Let me pull this guy on this side. These little guys, these little arrowheads right here, right? These are your blenders. So the closer those colors get, the more of a blend that you'll get. I'm not crazy about that, but I'm going to leave that alone for right now. The other thing that I want you to do with this gradient one, and you'll see, is I've got this, um, it's, I've also got a blur on here. So I want to show you that blur effect, because that's something that we haven't used before either. I'm actually going to take my pen tool, here a little quick pen tool demo, right? Let me kind of go in and trace this shape here. Boop, boop, boop. Get a little curve there, curvy there, straight. Uh, let's do a curve here. And let's do a curve here. Let's say like the straight doesn't make sense, right? Um, you can always switch to that curvature tool and kind of bump it out a little bit. And I'm, I just want this to be straight white, and I want no fill on there, just a straight white shape like that. Let me zoom out. I'm going to go and place that right there on my apple, right? Let me go and place that right there on my apple, kind of in the same exact spot. And what I want to experiment with here is the effects. And under the effects, you have different effects in here, but here's my blur. Same blur. I love this blur in Photoshop, too. I'm going to go hit Preview, and I'm going to see that it's going to kind of give me like just like a soft light effect on that apple. And that's exactly what I wanted. So that's my gradient. The green part, the, the leaf I'd have to do too, but I'm going to skip that one for now. Okay, so I'm um, done with my gradient one. There's that one. Um, I'm done with the stroke one. Let me close that. Let me go back to my layers. I'm going to unlock. I want this silhouette guy again, so I'm going to take that, right? Um, duplicate it. Option click to duplicate it. This is going to be my gradient mesh. Um, Command X to cut it out. New layer. Command V to paste it back. And then I can rename this one gradient mesh right this is going to be a new technique that we have not used before lock lock and I'm on this guy okay so that's going to be this guy right here um, again I'm going to need this apple picture so I'm kind of pushing this apple picture around here let's move it right about there okay so gradient mesh I'm just going to do the bottom portion of the apple here let me start by making it black and white again so you can see my different color change in areas all right so here we are this is how the gradient mesh works you cannot have a gradient and a gradient mesh on the same object I'm going to start with that red of the apple to give it that nice red um, you could click around to get different colors then I'm going to take this spider-man looking mesh tool and I want to go in and define areas where I want to have lighter and darker so if I clicked right there then I took my eyedropper. I can choose that dark color. See how I can kind of make that whole section of the apple a little bit darker. If I take that mesh tool, I want an area down here also to be dark. See how it's, pick, it's using that same color. And on this line, I want an area down here to be dark. So see, I'm kind of clicking around like that. So you can keep clicking around. You can even go in and you can modify where these guys are. You can kind of stretch it a little bit, right, to give it more of a curve. Right about here, I want to have that highlight kind of pop in there. 
but I don't want that highlight to take over so much. So let's say about here on the line, I want to bring back that really bright red color. So see, I'm kind of modifying and changing. This takes some definite nuancing, right? You're going to have to click a few times. You're going to have to experiment. Like over here, I want my color to get dark again to bring in that color. Oh, not that gray. I don't like that gray at all. There we go. And I can even zoom in then and I can go in and I can start to play with things like this and kind of move the colors around a little bit depending on where I want those colors to be. And if you click away, you can kind of see you're getting some really cool color effects there with the gradient mesh. Now, I would need to work that a little bit more and keep working it, but you can kind of see where, where that was going and where that was coming from. And you can always go back to it and say, okay, like about here, I want to bring in this kind of really bright red color there and kind of bring more colors down. So it's starting to look more 3D the more you work it. All right. All right. So we've gone through six illustrative techniques so far. Just a few more to go. Um, and I'm going to do those in a separate demo, I believe. But I'm going to keep going here as, I'm, as I got this going right here. So let me grab this guy, right? And I'm going to duplicate it. So this one's going to be my patterns. This one's super simple. Again, Command X, cut it out. Command V, let me paste it back in. This one is going to be my patterns. Um, and if you remember, patterns are with the... Go back and turn it black and white. I should, have, I should have a black and white one. Let me do this really quick. That I could start using that guy. Um, I'm going to take out my swatches. Here's my swatches, right? And in the swatch libraries, you have a bunch of patterns. And so in the patterns, let's say I chose some, some decorative patterns. Here's some decorative patterns for me to choose from. I just want you to kind of choose different shapes and apply different patterns to them. Ones that perhaps will correspond, oops, actually like that, that correspond with the object, right? That correspond with the shapes that you might be seeing or using. Um, this, I want this to be a green and I want this part to be a brown. And there's some really great patterns in Illustrator that you can choose from. You can even, um, there's a whole set of patterns in here that are just kind of like lines, right? These basic graphics. Like let's say I pick this dots one. Um, these are kind of cool. The only thing is that these are actually transparent. So let me actually, I'm going to duplicate. I want two um, shapes for the, the apple. Um, I want one to be just like this straight red color like that. And let's say I want this one to have dots, polka dots. See how it's transparent? So you almost need a duplicate if you want to kind of show the pattern on that piece like that. All right. Image trace is something that I'm going to do a different video for. I'm going to save that one for the for this, the last video. And then the last one I want to do here is going to be typography. So I'm going to pull this guy over here, and I'm going to show you some different ways to do the typography. So here is my text tools. I'm going to rip these off and kind of pull these over here. All I really want from the typography one is for you to experiment with using different types of text. And I've kind of messed up my my layers here, but I'm going to – I'm almost done here, so I'll just – keep going. Um, so one way to do the typography tool is to take your text, right, and to type out what you want. Do not use the default font. Find a better font to use. There's a thousand better fonts to use. Let's say I use this one right here. Um, and let's say I wanted to, to, to Jesus fish this apple, right? So by Jesus fish, I'm going to spread out the letters apple so that it kind of fits on the apple here. All right. One way for me to do that would be to be using the touch type tool. With the touch type tool, I can pick up individual letters, I can resize them, and I can kind of fit them within the space in here, right? I can kind of click on the different letters and I can resize them, I can overlap them, I can do some interesting things with that. All right, that's one way for me to do the type piece. I'm going back, Command. Command. Z, Z, Z. Um, another way to do the type piece is to create outlines from the text. So type and create outlines. And then once I do that, if you remember this, right, you've got every, you know, it becomes a shape. It's no longer text. So by taking the points, right, the individual points, now that I created outlines, I can grab those individual points. So click, pull, right, individual points versus the whole letter. And I can kind of size and shape up my text like that. And go in and clean it later. Um, I can even flip back to this guy and kind of pull lines like this too to kind of fit within that space. So that's another way to do the text tool. So this one will type straight across. This one will type vertically up and down. This one is an area type tool. This will type within a space. The way for this one to work is you have to click on the path. If I click on the path, see how I applied my text. I'm just going to apply Latin text in there. Let me shrink it down so you can see it, right? And let's see my text was Apple. 
right? The problem with this type of text is that you do not see a color behind it. And let me just copy this, right? Command C, space, Command V, Command V. I don't really, you can type whatever you want in here. And you could fill in the space that way. Although you do not see the shapes, you'd have to put a color there if you needed it. All right, last one right here is the type on a path. You can click on the path and type around the outside of the shape. And that's a different way to do the, the type one there. All right, so that is nine ways to illustrate a shape. Um, from this, you're going to be choosing three of these designs to create a final composition. Thank you for watching.